picture this. You and I have just come out of isolation and we are keen to go to the movies. We purchased gold class tickets to see a rerun of the classic Rocky. We grab our popcorn, Maltesers, and a chalk top, and we're excited to hop into a cushy electric recliner. We step into cinema number five, expecting to see rows of cinema seats facing the screen. But instead, we're confronted by the sights, sounds, and smells of a fully decked out boxing gym. Straight away, we're greeted by a sweaty trainer who directs us to do 50 burpees and 100 push-ups. He then hands us a glass with four raw eggs and some boxing gloves and places us each in front of a boxing bag. How would you feel? Excited or irritated? Inspired or ripped off? This is not what we were expecting. We wanted to watch Sylvester Stallone drip with sweat, but not get sweaty ourselves, right? So should the Church of Jesus Christ feel more like going to the movies or going to the gym. Ephesians 4.11 says the role of the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, pastors, and teachers is for the equipping of the saints to do the work of the ministry. So who should be doing the majority of the ministry? Well, clearly, according to Paul, it's the saints that are being equipped to do the work of the ministry. In fact, in 1 Corinthians 14, we get a glimpse of the ministry that was happening in the early church. 1 Corinthians 14, 26, when you come together, each of you has a hymn, a word of instruction, a revelation, a tongue or interpretation. There was an expectation in the church of Corinth that each member was bringing their gifting to contribute and to edify. Francis Chan built a mega church from 50 people in his living room to 5,000. One day, as he preached to the masses, he came to this revelation. I'm going, wait a second, according to the Bible, every single one of these people has a supernatural gift that's meant to be used for the body. 5,000 people show up every week to, to hear my gift, but they're just sitting there quietly. Chuck Pierce, who is a significant prophet in the U.S., prophesied about a Synaxis revival about a month before COVID exploded. He says, God showed me a changing way of gathering that was occurring in his kingdom plan. One of the early church's names for house church gathering was Synaxis. Every week, the members of the early church met in a Synaxis. As the large celebration gatherings were incubators for faith and vision, the small Synaxis gatherings were incubators for gifts. In the Synaxis, believers were trained to discover, develop, and practice their gifts. It is in the context of a Synaxis that the goal of Ephesians 4 is fulfilled. God's people are equipped for the work of the ministry. Even if all the fivefold ministers were in place, if there were not a place for the believers to actually practice their gifts, no equipping would occur. But when the believers are built up in the faith through the celebrations, and then given the opportunity to exercise their gifts in a synaxis, a revival dynamic is created. Since the COVID-19 lockdown, many churches have gone into crisis. Attendance and giving has dropped to up to 60% in many churches. And yet I'm hearing of many churches and movements with an emphasis on the synaxis that are growing, flourishing, and multiplying. Perhaps this is a moment that God is calling us to reimagine the church and get back to the primary purpose of our gathering to equip the saints and to stir one another up into love and good deeds. There may never be a greater opportunity in history for awakening the bride. It is time to smash consumerism and to see a grassroots movement of Jesus lovers doing the work of the ministry. I shared more extensively on this last Sunday. You're more than welcome to watch the link below. New wine needs a new wineskin.